For the most part, objects do not move in just a single direction from our reference point. There are obstacles to move around, there are flowers to go see, barking dogs to avoid. This chapter deals with how to describe motion in two dimensions. Say you want to walk from your house to the grocery store. Chances are good that you will not be able to take a direct route. You don't want to walk through neighbors' yards and there's buildings in the way. You will probably need to walk in a certain direction along the city blocks and then turn and walk in another direction along the city blocks. In this example, you walk nine blocks to the east and then five blocks to the north. Your total distance traveled is 14 blocks, but your displacement away from where you start is less than that. Hopefully, you remember a little bit of algebra and realize that this forms a right triangle. We can determine the displacement using the Pythagorean theorem. Remember we use arrows to represent vector quantities. The length of the arrow is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. If we look at our vectors, we see that the north vector represents five blocks and the east vector represents nine blocks. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we find the resultant vector represents 10.3 blocks and it points in a direction somewhere between east and north. The question now is where exactly between east and north? We want to determine a more precise description. In order to do this, we must find the angle that our resultant vector forms at the origin. This is where we get into some basic trigonometry. We can use any of the three trigonomic functions to find the magnitude of our angle. In this case, our displacement ends up being 29.1 degrees north of east. Now this works really well if our vectors are perpendicular to each other. It gets a little trickier when they are not. So we need a way to determine a resultant vector. We can still use our vector addition method to determine our overall motion. Example 2.1 on page 91 of your book shows a person walking three paths on a flat field. She first walks 25 meters in the direction 49 degrees north of east. Then she walks 23 meters 15 degrees north of east. And finally she walks 32 meters in a direction 68 degrees south of east. We can use our head-to-tail method of adding vectors to determine her overall displacement. If it is easier for you, draw each displacement vector from the origin. Then place each vector head-to-tail, keeping each vector's initial magnitude and direction. Draw the resultant vector from the origin to the head of the last vector. If we have measured carefully, we should be able to measure the magnitude with a ruler and the angle with a protractor. One really good thing about this method is that you can add the vectors in any order and still end up with the same resultant vector. Now the problem with this method is that it requires us to be extremely careful with how we measure and draw our vectors. One little slip and we end up with a wrong resultant vector. The good news is that math can give us a better way to determine our resultant vector. Any vector can be resolved into an x component and a y component in a coordinate system by making it a right triangle. All it takes is a little trigonometry and we can determine these components pretty easily. In the example problem on page 99, we're going for a walk for 53 meters in a direction 20 degrees north of east. We then turn and go 34 meters in a direction 63 degrees north of east. We draw each vector separately and add those head to tail in order to determine the resultant vector. The x and y components of the resultant vector are the sum of the x and y components of the a vector and the x and y components of the b vector. We can form a right triangle with our coordinate system and our resultant vector. In order to determine the x and y components of our resultant vector, we need to determine the x and y components of our a vector and the x and y components of our b vector. Remember that every vector can be resolved into a right triangle with our coordinate system. We can then determine the value of the x component of our a vector, the x component of our b vector, the y component of our a vector, and the y component of our b vector. The y component of the resultant triangle is the sum of the y component of our a vector and the y component of our b vector. The x component 
of the resultant triangle is the sum of the x component of our a vector and the x component of our b vector. To determine the x components of our a vector and b vector, we use the cosine of the angles and add them together. In our example problem, our first vector we were walking 53 meters in a direction 20 degrees north of east. So we take the cosine of 20 degrees, multiply it by 53, and we get 49.8. Our second vector, we turned and we went 34 meters in a direction 63 degrees north of east. So our cosine of 63 times 34 is 15.4. So the x component of our resultant vector is 49.8 plus 15.4 meters for a total of 65.2 meters. To determine the y components of our a vector and b vector, we use the sine of the angles and add them together. So the sine of 20 degrees times 53 is 18.1. The sine of 63 degrees times 34 is 30.3 for a total of 48.4 for the resultant y vector. Now that we know two sides of our resultant triangle, we can determine the resultant vector using the Pythagorean theorem. We take our 65.2 meters squared and add it to 48.4 meters squared. The square root of that is 81.2 meters. So our displacement from our start point to our end point was 81.2 meters. Now we also want to know the angle. So what direction were we traveling in relation to our origin? The angle is equal to the tangent of the two sides of our triangle. Our y vector is 48.4 meters. Our x vector was 65.2. Our resultant vector is 36.6 degrees north of east.